This video introduces the idea of matrix multiplication by thinking about it in terms of the dot product. So I want to start by just going over some ideas from vectors, and it's related to um, finding angles between vectors, finding the length of vectors. Uh, we're not going to focus on that aspect of it very much here in this class, um, but the dot product is where you take two vectors that have the same length, and you multiply their elements term by term and then add up the result. So given two vectors in Rn, and here the n refers to how many values are in my vector, so Rn, R3 has three entries, R2 has two entries, the dot product between two vectors is calculated by adding up the product of individual entries. So here I've got two vectors, I've got a vector u and a vector v, uh, they both have the same length, and so what I do is I create a summation going through the values from 1 to n of the product of the kth entry of u times the kth entry of v. Now, if you do a dot product with yourself, then what you're doing is you're adding the sum of the squares. And that turns out to be the uh, square of the length of the vector. Um, so this is actually one way to calculate the length of a vector. Uh, you calculate a dot product of a vector with itself, and then you take a square root. So this is called the Euclidean length of the vector. Now, notice that this arithmetic of doing a dot product is the same thing that we did when we did a linear combination. That is, I could think of doing a linear combination of the entries of the vector v, and the values in the vector u are my coefficients. At the same time, I could think about it in the reverse way. I could think about u. I'm doing a linear combination of the elements of u, and I'm using the values of v as the coefficients of the, of the linear combination. So it's like a two-way linear combination. Well, let's talk a little bit about a matrix before we talk about multiplying matrices. I want to talk about how to think of the size of a matrix. So a matrix is a table of values that has rows and columns, and um, the number of rows is given is the first value, and then I calculate the number of columns as the second value. So for example, a 3 by 5 matrix is going to have 3 rows and 5 columns. So a 3 by 5 matrix would look like um, this picture that I've just drawn. And if I talk about something, and I want to talk about the individual values in my matrix, then I refer to them by rows and columns. So the 2, 3 entry is talking about the second row and the third column, and so the 2, 3 entry would be this value on row 2, column 3. Um, we often associate names with our matrices, so if I call this matrix A, then I can talk about the 2, 3 entry as A with a subscript 2, 3, or I can talk about the entry ENT function um, at position IJ as giving that particular value. Okay, so um, that's just some terminology and some notation that we'll use. I want to think about that, I want to take advantage of that linear combination idea. Uh, we have been looking at systems of equations, and we have a matrix already. Um, and so notice that on the left of our standard representation of our systems, I have linear combinations. And so I could think of that as being a dot product of the coefficients 2, negative 1, 3 with the vectors x, y, z. And the second row, I could think of that as the coefficients 1, 1, negative 2, times the values of the vectors x, y, z. Um, when we wrote our augmented matrix, we put the coefficients in rows, so our coefficients are in our rows, and I have as many rows as I had equations, and so this um, part of our augmented matrix, I want to think of that as being a coefficient matrix. Let's give that a name A. And then I've got the right-hand side. Um, I'm going to associate this as being a vector B. Okay. So I could think of that as a vector. Um, and 
I want to take advantage of this idea of a dot product, and so I'm going to have a matrix A times this vector of variables. I'm going to call that the vector of variables, maybe the vector x. And I want that to be equal the vector b. And the only way that's going to make sense is if this creates linear combinations. So I need this to mean I'm creating a linear combination 2 times x plus negative 1 times y plus 3 times z. That's the way I have to interpret that first row is going to equal the value 4. And that second row, 1, 1, negative 2, I have to be able to think of that as 1 times x plus 1 times y plus negative 2 times z is going to equal 5 if I have any chance of these three representations as meaning the same thing. And this is going to motivate us for why we define matrix multiplication the way that we do. I want to define matrix multiplication, and it only is going to make sense when um, the number of columns in the first matrix, so here's the number of columns, matches the number of rows in the second matrix. So this is the number of rows. Because I'm going to go across a row and down a column, they have to be the same number of terms for that dot product to make any sense. Okay, so this means that when I define a matrix multiplication, matrices have to be special. So here I've defined a matrix where A is on the left and B is on the right, and they have the same number of, um, A has the number of columns as B has the number of rows. And I need to say what that means, and so the IJ entry, which means row I and column J of my product, so here's that notation, the entry in row I, column J of a new matrix, so this is a product matrix. We want to think of AB as a new matrix has to be defined as this dot product as I go across a row. So I'm working through row I, and I'm working through column J of B, and I'm working my way across the row and down the column. Okay, So this is how we're going to define it. Um, this is the notation, and let's go through a practice calculation. All right, so on the left I have a matrix, on the right I have a matrix. Let's, let's focus about the, the concepts that we've talked about. Um, we're going to think about just, first of all, the size of our matrices. And it's always rows, then columns. So the first matrix on the left has two rows by three columns. So the matrix is two by three. The second matrix on the right is three rows and two columns. And the inside values here, the number of columns of the first and the number of rows of the second, so notice they're adjacent to each other, they're neighbors, two by three times three by two, this part is where I'm gonna do my dot product. And so that is gonna go away. My answer has to be two by 2. And let's choose a color here. The first two came from the number of rows of the original matrix. Think of that as like the number of equations. I have to have a number of the same number of equations on the right. Um, the, the second value, it's, uh, has to come from the number of columns of the matrix on the right. So we're going to be creating a matrix that is 2 by 2. We're going to have four numbers created. How do I get those numbers? I'm going to do dot products of rows and columns. So let's think through that. I've got on the first row, I'm going to be working with the first row of the matrix on the left. 
When I'm dealing with columns, I think about columns coming from the right. All right, so let's look at the 1-1 one, one entry. The 1-1 one, one entry is going to be looking at the first row of the left matrix, the first column of the right matrix. So let's create our dot product. I'm going to do a dot product of the row with a column, and so I get 2 times the first one plus negative 1 times the second one plus 3 times the third one. That's my dot product of the first row with the first column. All right, so now I'm going to do this for, um, let's do the second row this time. So I'm going to do the 1, 1, negative 2 dot product with the 1, 1, 1. And so I get 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1 plus negative 2 times 1. Okay, so think about how, you, how you're going to remember that. I'm going across a row and down a column. And I multiply the terms and I add them together. Okay, let's just finish by doing the uh, second column. And this time we're going to be using the 2, 0, negative 1 on the right. So I'll get 2 times 2 plus negative 1 times 0 plus 3 times negative 1. Right, I've gone across the first row and down the second column. And then the last value. 1 times 2 plus 1 times 0 plus negative 2 times negative 1. And there we go. So I get linear combinations of the entries of the rows and columns of the two matrices. Um, you know, it's, it's useful probably to notice that you've got some things that are the same, right? So I've got, um, as I take the matrix on the left, call that A just for a minute, the values of a, 2, minus 1, 3, 1, 1, negative 2, show up in those two entries. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm taking from that column, I'm using the three values from that first column of the matrix on the right. OK. And we just finish by calculating those four values. Um, I've explicitly written out the summations, and I think it's useful for you in the first part of learning that you write out those calculations as well. Um, as you get better at it, you'll just write down the answer. Like you'll think through the sum and write it down. So I get 2 plus negative 1 plus 3, and so that is 4. And uh, below that, I get 1 plus 1 minus 2, that'll be 0. Um, 2 times 2 is 4, so I'll get, on, I'm on the right column, 4 plus 0 plus negative 3 is 1, and that last value uh, is 2 plus 0 plus 2 gives me 4. So the matrix product of those two values is 4, 1, 0, 4. That, those are the values of my matrix. All right, um, so that should be enough for you to be able to start practicing calculating the products of matrices.